Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. I am your man, Captain Will. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will so I continue to bring you that gospel of Gamecocks every single day. Every single day, y'all. Every single day. You are now, you are now rocking with the best. And since you are rocking with the best, come rock with your man. Captain Will, we got a good one today, y'all. We have a good one today, y'all. It is Tuesday. It is April the 16th. It is 8.01 p.m. And it is time to talk about some game cock basketball. That is what we do every day, sometimes twice a day. We are talking about game cock women's basketball all the time, all the time. This is what we do. This is what we do, y'all. So, so, so much to talk about. So much to talk about in terms of the Gamecocks. And, you know, we had the WNBA draft. And, and salute. Salute out to Camila Cardoza. I mean, so many great things are happening for this young lady. And I just couldn't be overjoyed. I need to order my, my Camila Cardoza jersey. I need to represent. I need to uh, 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 put a plug in for, for fanatics or whoever to, so we can get these jerseys. She looked so beautiful last night. Her and her family looked amazing. And just, we just can't be more happier. We can't be more happier. She is going to the Chicago sky. Amazing. Just, just, just awesome. Just in the end, in the end, <laughs> a few picks later, we had, the Chicago Sky with another pick. We're sitting there watching the draft. My wife and I, we're sitting there watching the draft, just chilling. And, and, and it was like, okay. I said, I turned to her and I said, you know what? She ain't gonna, they, they're gonna choose uh, Angel Reese. They're gonna choose Angel Reese. And I believe they're gonna choose Angel Reese because they need more size and they need more rebound and just overall talent in general. And, I, and they said Angel Reese, I was like, yeah, here we go. It's about to go down. We can be like our dose of Angel Reese. In Chicago. Now, it, 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 on that, a lot of different storylines that we could talk about and, and with this whole um, uh, reuniting situation in Chicago. And, and But at the end of the day, Chicago has two talented, talented players, young and, and uh, are going to be some cornerstones for the future. For the here and now in the future. They got offers of rebounding. They got size. They got so many things. So many things. They got storylines. They selling tickets. I mean, come on. This is just awesome for, for, for women's basketball. It's just, it's just great. And, and then the draft itself. I mean, you're talking about. Two and a half million, two and a half million people watched the WNBA draft last night. Two and a half million people. That is more than Major League Baseball. Not only just more than Major League Baseball, you talk, I'm talking about triple, triple the amount of people. Watch the WNBA draft, then the Major League Baseball draft. You talk about the NHL, almost four times more than them. It's only a million. Just think about this right here. We, we, we hear so much about the NBA draft. NBA draft. And, 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 and how many people watch the NBA draft, I thought. How many people watch the NFL draft? Because, I, I, I mean, I live, breathe, and eat the NFL draft. Every year, and I've been doing that since I was a kid. When I found out that, I think it was six million? Six million people watched the NFL draft? I was like, what in the hell? Where did this come from? Never thought that. I never even, I never phantom that amount because uh, with so much hype, you know, the NFL gets. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. In the NBA draft, you're talking about 3.7 million people watched the NBA draft last season. 
These are because we're going to talk about numbers and we're going to talk about, you know, uh, you know, people come out the woodwork now. You know, they didn't even care for no women's basketball before. They didn't care for it at all. But everybody got something to say. Everybody got something to say about the WNBA not getting paid millions upon millions of dollars. It's been that way for so long. You just ain't watched the WNBA. And now you know what's going on. Okay, so everybody was up in arms when they saw, oh, Camila Cardoza's contract for the next four years. When they saw Caitlin Clark, oh, all hell almost broke loose when they saw Caitlin Clark's, you know, contract for the next four years. Those are the realities. Those are the realities. You got a uh, celebrity. You got uh, my man Russell Wilson came out and said, oh, it's a travesty about how much these uh, ladies are getting in the WNBA. This is a travesty, and, and, and they should be getting more. Hell yeah, they should be getting more. Yes, they should be getting more. But, the you know, uh, the, the, some of the comments, and I'm just reiterating, I'm just reiterating some of the stuff that was said. I'm like, Russell Wilson, have you been to a WNBA game? Do you have season tickets? Have you purchased merchandise? Have you doing those things? You know, unless you contribute to the 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 uh, growth of the WNBA, not just because it's cool right now, not just because it's cool right now. We talking about over the course of years. WNBA been around for twenty seven years, twenty seven years, twenty seven years. And the comparisons of the NBA, first off, is crazy. Okay, let's begin with that. NBA been around for seventy some years, seventy some years, and. I remember when the NBA was about to go out of business. I remember those days. It was saved by Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. I remember those days when they wasn't making 40, 50, 60 million dollars like they're doing right now. But I tell you this right here. Stuff is about to change. Stuff is about to change because there's a whole new contract. That collecting, uh, collective bargaining deal that was done by the WNBA some years ago, oh, oh, that thing about to get tore up next year. It about to get tore up next year because right now, right now, you have eyeballs on top of eyeballs watching women's basketball. You can't justify, you cannot justify with, with these meager contract deals because this is the thing. This is the thing right here, Ralph. These players make their money off TV deals. Reality. They made their money off TV deals. So if you have, you can have a a a a, a football team. I'm I'm a Washington Commanders, right? I'm a, I'm a Washington Commanders. It's it, it been tough times for us. It's been tough times. For us. I know, I know. It's been a long time. We got new leadership. We got new 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 energy, right? But Washington Commanders ain't making money off play up uh, uh, people actually going to Washington Commanders games. They ain't making money off that. They making money off TV contracts, TV deals. Even though we suck right now, that's how much. That's how they making their money. NBA, they ain't making the Hornets suck. They my squad. They ain't making money off the people coming to see the Charlotte Hornets. They making money from the NBA TV deals. In order for our girls to get paid what they deserve, in order for our girls to get paid what they deserve, these TV deals have to step up. You can't have a situation where the, the, the women's basketball, college basketball, outgain the men by four million. Four million? You can't have a situation where the NBA, where the LeBrons and the KDs and the, uh, the Zion Williamsons and Steph Currys and all these different players making – Trillion dollars in the NBA draft, drawing one million more people than the WNBA. You can't have that. It don't make sense. The math ain't math. It just don't remember. It don't. It don't. It don't make no sense. These young ladies are about to feel the growth that the uh, the, the NBA felt over the eighties. They about to see it. It's going to happen in, in, uh, incrementally. It ain't going to happen like tomorrow. It ain't going to happen like next year. But you are about to see the growth of the WNBA explode. I ain't never heard this much talk about the WNBA ever since I've been watching the WNBA. Ain't never heard this much. Now, I don't agree with everything NBA, uh, what, a good, what a call. ESPN does. I'm not, I don't, 
by no means am I a, a, a fan of everything they do. Not all. But I tell you this right here, they are definitely, definitely going to put their uh, best foot forward for the WNBA because they see dollar signs. They just see dollar signs. They see marketing opportunities. They see a way to get paid. So if it's the, if it's Caitlin Clark, who's opening doors, much like Magic and Bird did, you know, 40 years ago, I'm all for it. Because you got tick, you got people who are going to pay a ticket to the picture show to see Caitlin Clark. And they're going to roll up and see Aaliyah Boston. You got the Las Vegas Aces who had to go uh, 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 open a bigger arena when, when Indiana come, come to town. So you, can, you come to see Caitlin Clark, but you're going to see oh, the greatest in WNBA right now, in, in uh, Asia Wilson, I own. You might see, uh, it, it, I, I love it. I love it. Because there's my, more eyeballs, there's more news stations talking about the WNBA. So as long as you show visibility about a certain sport, but you also got to support. You have to support. You got you to gotta support this. You, you have to support these young girls and these women. You have to buy their gear. You have to watch it on television. You need to get a WNBA league pass. You need to keep the momentum of this sport going. If we want to see these young ladies get paid, and we all do. We want to see these young ladies one day making what the men are making. But I tell you this right here. These contracts that the men are making, it might be a little different. And collect the bargain agreement come up for them too. I'm just saying. Because they not NBA is not getting the numbers that they're getting paid for. The math is not mathing. It it just it just doesn't make sense. It don't make sense. But it uh, what's, what's it called? Um, NBA uh, play in. NBA play in starts tonight. Starts tonight. They got the Lakers and I think it's the, the Pelicans. They got Golden State and uh, is it Sacramento. I don't even know because I don't even watch NBA like that no more. And you talk about a hard core NBA knucklehead right here. Don't even watch the NBA like that anymore. It's kind of crazy, right? The game has changed so much. I, I can't keep up with the changes. It's not basketball to me. It's, it's not basketball. I just can't do it. Can't do it. But I tell you this right here on May 3rd. I know Indiana is playing Dallas in a uh, preseason game. I know I would be tuned in for that. I know those facts that I'd be tuned in for that. I know that on May 14th, the WNBA season start. Cause I just can't get enough of uh, a uh, women's college basketball right now. We got to keep the, keep the heat on, keep the heat on. It's just awesome. It's just awesome to see. And I'm, and I'm glad, I'm glad that um, it's in the mainstream. In the mainstream, I'm, I'm happy about that. And the draft itself, I mean, we all knew when you turned into the draft, you know, it was going to be the Caitlin Clark show. We knew that. And um, ESPN did what they, you know, what we all expected. We, you know, we're going to talk about Caitlin Clark every, every other second. You know, it's fine. It, it is what it is. But it was no surprise in the morning. Not at all. No surprises. We knew that Caitlin Clark was going to go to Indiana and she's going to join Aaliyah Boston. And it's going to be awesome. And they're going to lose a whole lot of games because Indiana is not a good basketball team. That's why they had a number one pick this year and had a number one pick last year. So they're not a good basketball team. But they got Jay, uh, they got Aaliyah Boston, and now they got Caitlin Clark, and they're going to continue to grow. But they're going to be terrible this year. And just keep it real. But we all going to be watching because we want to see what they do. And you can't lie. You can't lie. We're going to watch to see what Caitlin Clark, how she adjusts, adjusts to the WNBA. But make no mistake about it. No, make, make, make no mistake about it. The best player on the team is Aaliyah Boston. Don't get that twisted. Don't get that twisted. The best player on the team is Aaliyah Boston. Okay? So, Caitlin Clark, I'll make a mark this year. But Aaliyah Boston is the one on that basketball team. And then the second pick. The second pick was a little, uh, even though, I, you know, I, I predict the Cameron Brink was going to, you know, be the second pick. It, it was some some rumblings about Camila Cardoza possibly jumping up to two and by the uh, Sparks. But, you know, Cameron Brink went to Stanford. And now she's a uh, Los Angeles Sparks. going to be playing with Zaya Cook. Not mad at all. Not mad at all. You know, 
And then Camila Cardoza, like we already talked about, you know, going to the Chicago sky. Look beautiful. Sister look beautiful. Why, uh, why, um, her mom's look beautiful. Everybody just looks so nice. And to have them coming from Brazil and, and, and taking part of the festivities, and it was just awesome. Just awesome. And, and of course, Don Staley there. She always rock for, for her uh, players. I mean, come on. We had five last year, one this year, probably two or three next year. Come on now. Rikia Jackson. Rikia Jackson to, uh, to uh, Los Angeles was nice. I, I kind of like that. Kind of like that. I would have preferred Cameron Brink and, and um, our girl, but it didn't transpire. So it is what it is. So happy for, for her. You know, SEC was representing. So, I mean, you talking about Angel Reese and uh, Marquisha Davis and a lot of different players got drafted. I'm happy for Elisa uh, Peely. I really like her, her, her. I love her game. She gave us work. She gave South Carolina work. I love her game. Um, WNBA is here to stay. It's here to stay. And it's only going to get bigger and better. So you either uh, jump on board, which it looks like a lot of uh, bandwagon fans are starting to do, or you try to ignore it, like some folks have done, and and, and been a whole lot of men who just like it ain't. It's a lot of dudes, you know what I'm saying? Like over the course of time, it's not basketball, it's not this, it's not that. Well, that that notion is gone. It's gone because at this point right now, college basketball revolves around the ladies. Not the men. It revolves around the ladies. The ladies have all the storyline. Look how many storylines we got we got coming up in this upcoming season. I mean, obviously South Carolina undefeated. Possibility of going back to back. Possibility of going back to back. Uh, uh, undefeated seasons. Continuing the SEC win streak. Continuing the home win streak. So many different storylines on that on that piece. Uh, repeat tour. You got UConn coming back healthy. Now, of course, they lost Nika Mule, who was drafted. They lost Aaliyah Edwards, who was drafted. But they got a, a really good recruiting class. And Asia Fudd coming back. And, you know, Paige Beckers doing her thing. LSU. Folks want to know what in the hell LSU going to be doing next season. Because we don't know. We don't know. Don't have a clue. We have no clue what LSU is going to do next year. But we're going to follow. Because Kim Mulkey makes you follow her. You know, and Southern Cal. Were they a really good, you know, recruiting class? See what they're going to do? A lot of different storylines. What storylines that they're talking about in men's basketball? Men's college basketball. Oh, talking about John Calipari leaving Kentucky and going over to Arkansas? That's the only thing they're talking about. They ain't talking about nothing else. It ain't no storylines. Because they dip out. They dip out so quick before you even know their names. Not our girls. Our girls stay. We know everything about it. everything about it. now. I'm a little pissed off. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm a little pissed off about you know uh, Camila Cardoza. You know uh, Holly finally getting and asking the questions or letting the world know what we've known for a long time, and that's the story of Camila Cardoza about how she came over at 15 years old, couldn't even speak English, left her family, play basketball. That should have been talked about. Every time Carolina played in the tournament, all the time, all the time. Now I know ESPN got this old, uh, old documentary coming out on May 11th. And it's going to be Caitlin Clark, Camila Cardoza, and I think Angel Reese going to be talking all about this stuff. And I know some of those things got to come up then, but I don't care about that. I don't care about that. You had opportunity to talk about stories that actually mattered, and we wait till she's drafted in the W. To talk about all these stories. I was a little upset about that. I was. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Let's go through a few of these questions. But a few of these questions. So many questions. And we got 288 people watching right now. And if you are watching right now, obviously you're a Gamecock fan, but you're also a basketball fan. So if you're not a subscribed to Captain Will, make sure you subscribe to Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. Like and like it and, and share it and all those cool things that we do. Yolanda Wells, funny how the universe works for Camila and Angel. <laughs> Boston and Caitlin, LOL. It's so crazy. 
you never know what's in store, man. You never know what's in store. Like, you got Camilla and Angel on the same team. You got Aaliyah and Caitlin Clark on the same team. That you couldn't, you literally couldn't write it any better. You couldn't write it any better. That's just amazing. It's just like, <laughs> like what, what can go wrong will go wrong. And now we're teammates. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. Can't wait. Can't wait. Oh, God. Mm, it's going to be awesome. The Widowmaker. This should be interesting. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be. I mean, I cannot wait to watch Chicago Sky games. I cannot wait to watch any Indiana Fever games. I just can't wait. And then, of course, we're watching Vegas, uh, the Vegas uh, Aces. And anywhere there's a game caught, I'm going to be watching. Let me talking about it. Atlanta Dream, Connecticut Sun. We everywhere. We everywhere. So we got to talk about all of them. TKO. Anywho, that nightmare, that combo will be a nightmare for all teams. They'll dominate. Well, here's the way. Here's the way it works. Dominate. Mm. Pump your brakes on that. Pump your brakes on that. Because Indiana's terrible. They were terrible with. Well, let me say this right here. Chicago's the reason that it ain't no different than because uh, we put in context, right? NBA, the worst teams pick early, right? NFL, the worst teams pick early. I know all about the NFL because my commanders are being are picking second in the NFL. That means we horrible. Okay. So the teams that pick early aren't good basketball teams. And you can't sprinkle in a even though great college players. But here's the thing. Everybody is great in the WNBA. When you only have 12 teams, you only got, of those 12 teams, you only have 12 roster spots. Everybody good. And here's the thing. You had, what, 36 uh, young ladies got drafted last night? 36 of them. Half of them ain't going to make the team. Let's just keep it real. Half of these young ladies had their moment last night. Half of them ain't going to make the team. Because they're not enough spots. This is why they're adding, they want to add four new WNBA teams by 2018. They want to add, you know, two more by 2026. There are not enough spots for these talented ladies to play. You get more teams, you get more money. But you got to have a, a, a outlet for these girls and women to play in. And right now, the WNBA is the toughest league to make. The toughest one. Not the NBA, not the NFL, not NHL, not Major League Baseball. The WNBA is the toughest professional league to make. An abundance of talent and not enough uh, employers for that talent. So some of these outstanding players who were tremendous in college won't make the team. I'm still upset about our girl, uh, Bree Bill. Still upset about that. She's getting cut at the last minute. I'm still upset about Kiki still trying to make a WNBA team. You know, Elena Coates got her ring last year with the Aces. But she was back and forth with the WNBA for years. It is so hard to make this squad. Las Vegas Aces had multiple picks. And the names that you know. Names that you know, Deja Fair, Kate Martin, Elizabeth Kitley. Great names that we know if you watch college basketball. But here's the problem. The problem is the Aces. They ain't no, they ain't no room at the end. All three of them young ladies are not going to make that basketball team because the Aces are so good. It's only 12 spots. There's no G League in the WNBA. So it's not like you can, like the Hornets uh, uh, draft multiple players and then stash them in the G League so they can get better. The WNBA ain't got that. The G League is across the pond over there playing in Switzerland and Australia and New Zealand. Matter of fact, home, my homeboy, one of my best friends in all of the world, you know, uh, sent me this note talking about New Zealand Pro League. Where they can make, I think it was like $1,800 a week playing for New Zealand. And they doubled their pay. 
You know, so that's going to be an outlet for young ladies to go get paid overseas and play for them for a couple months and then go over to, to various other countries in Germany and Italy and all these different countries to make money because there's not enough spots. The ladies play about 40 games. That's been increased over the time. You know, more games, more teams, keep the momentum going. But you're going to have a lot of players that we love. It's not going to make a WNBA team. It's not. You're like, God, man, that, I love that player. Why she got cut? Because the team that she owned too deep. That's the reality of it. That's the reality of it. Like, man. Natural girl, right after I knew they would be teammates, I purchased my WNBA league pass. LOL. Girl, I wonder how many folks did the same thing you did. All right, okay, we're going to get this one. You're going to get this one. Because I know for sure everybody in Iowa got NBA league pass. Yeah, WNBA league pass. I know they did. They had to. And the way LSU rolled deep. You know what I'm saying? They, if you, this is what make it's just weird to me. It's just weird to me. You don't stop. If you've been following a player for three, four years, and now that player that you love is now on to the professionals. Camila Cardoza, on to the professionals. We use her as an example. We're just going to stop. Like, I ain't, I ain't studying about Camila Cardoza. She got us a championship. Matter of fact, she got two of them. She going to the WNBA, and I ain't studying about that. I know it's, a, you know it's a sport and everything, but no. Like, how do you turn that off? You just can't turn that off. You go, oh, snap. Uh, Camila Cardoza is playing on Tuesday night. Oh, I got to watch her. I got to watch her with my game clock gear on, or maybe some Chicago Sky gear on. You know what I mean? Like, you just got to continue that momentum. Continue that. Um, Robert Whitaker, y'all see Ja went to Arizona? Yeah. Yes, yeah, Anaya Jaw is in Arizona. And she's an Arizona Wildcat. And I wish her well. I'm telling you, I wish her well. Only met her a couple times, met her mom. Um, seems to be a great family. And I wish them well as they go to Arizona. I hope, hope Sanaya Jaw finds whatever she's looking for, comfortability, playing time, whatever, whatever the situation is. You know, um, I hope the coaching staff, you know, supports her and, and you know, because you need that. You need that. But she's in Arizona and we'll be talking about her. I've been talking about her for time to time, how she did or how she's doing in, in, in her upcoming season. You know, we have to. She's a game cop. She's a game cop. So you're going to have to talk about it. I just hope I hope I, I just wish her well. I wish her well. No ill will about Sanaya Ja whatsoever. She was electrifying, lightning. Uh, lightning bug on the court when she got on the court. So she's a talented player, and maybe she'll find her way there. Wish her well. Wish her well. Kimberly Page, sorry to break it to you, Cap. I'm no longer a South Carolina fan. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a Chicago Scott fan. <laughs> That's so funny. That is so funny. We got to buy the gear. You know, it's tough to buy gear for everybody on Gamecocks. Who actually in the league is tough. So, I mean, come on. It's tough, man. But it's going to be interesting, Chicago. And I don't have a WNBA team. I'm just a Gamecock um, cheerleader, I guess, wherever they go. That's where I am, you know. So I don't have a team per se. Um, maybe I should get a team. Yeah, maybe I should. I don't know. Rodney McKnight, I don't know how she will be as a coach, but I can see a little bit of the Staley competitiveness with the Sky's new coach. Defense and toughness couldn't ask for more than the pair they drafted. Yeah, I mean, and thank you for being a member as well, Ronnie. Um, they, they, they are looking for an identity. And if you're starting your identity with defense, I mean, those three, or with those two, I should say, I was thinking about Cameron Brink as well. You know, um, Cardoza is a six for seven defensive stalwart, block shots, rebound the basketball, can run the court. Smart basketball player. Angel Reese is an awesome offensive rebounder. You know, she's tough. We all know that. She's aggressive. She ain't gonna back down. You know, so you get into you you literally get into dogs. Now they they two young dogs. They are, but they're two dogs. And there's gonna be some in it. Think about 
Just think about these scenarios, man. Think about when, like, oh man, Camila Cardoza going against Agent Wilson. You know, ah oh, man, Angel Reese going against Aaliyah Boston again. It's it's so many scenarios that we could see. Gamecocks going against Gamecocks. You know, I just can't wait. I will. I mean, I hope. I hope Kiki makes it and going against you know uh, other teammates and you know Zaya Cook and oh gosh, there's so many scenarios. But must see TV is a is is Angel Wilson going against Camila Cardoza. And, and, and injuries. That is that's much. That's must see must see TV. That, that is that's what we want. That's what you pay for. That's what you pay for fourteen ninety nine or thirty four ninety nine, whichever the case may be. Because I'm finding out from folks that some folks they getting charged fourteen ninety nine. Some folks getting thirty four ninety nine. Not sure. Maybe it's a, a different code. I'm not sure. But regardless, if you're playing fourteen ninety nine for the season, or you're playing thirty five dollars for the season, that's is it's almost free. It's almost free. So you're talking about you can get all the games that you want to see. Come on. You can't beat that. You can't beat that. I think the uh, NBA league passed like $400 or something. $40? $35? Come on. Mm-mm. I smile. I was sad at first. I wanted Camilla to go to the Sparks and play with Zaya. I believe Chicago is a better fit now, so I'm happy. I smile. I feel you because I felt the same way. I was sad at first as well. Kind of. I let me say that. Let me say that. I knew that Brink was 99% going to the Sparks. I was hoping that after Brink, it was going to be Aaliyah Edwards. And then Camila Cardoza would go to the Sparks as well. It didn't work out that way. So I was sad for a second, and then I was happy as I don't know what when they said that uh, Angel Reese was going there too with Camila Cardoza. I was like, I, I just got to, I mean, come on. I mean, just you, just make me more happy, you know, if, if Fla J eventually go there too. <laughs> I had to say it. I had to say it. Yeah, Fla J actually goes there too. That would be amazing for me, just for my, 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 my craziness, if something else to say. Just amazing. Antonio. I think they're going to be the Twin Towers duo like Robinson and Duncan. Oh, pump your brakes, bro. Pump your brakes. Pump your brakes now. Let's see. Let's see. Let them play a game. Let them play a game now. Let them play a game. It might be Rob. We'll see. We'll see. Because the scenario is, you know, just revisionist history. Duncan came in as a rookie. Robinson had already played multiple, multiple years and championships and all that cool stuff. All right. Okay. Now you got two. You got two. Dominant college players playing for the same team. Okay. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how they play together. We'll see how it's just it's gonna be fun to see. Antonio, I hope you're right. I I hope you're right. I have never cheered for Angel Reese in my life. I have not. I've never did that. I didn't cheer for her when she was in Maryland. I definitely didn't cheer for her in LSU. Now I have to cheer for her because she's playing on the same team as Camila Cardoza. I feel perplexed. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know how I feel about this. If you see Captain Will with a with a with a uh, Angel Reese Chicago Sky jersey on, you might have to have me check. I'm just saying, I I it j- I don't know what's going on in my brain right now. I don't know how to feel. Maybe you're feeling the same way. Maybe I should be a Chicago Sky fan now. Don't know. It's really messing me up. It's messing me up. I don't know how to feel. It's gonna be tough. During the WBA season. <laughs> Jay Judah. What's up, girl? Coach Don Staley and Camila Cardoza rang the opening bell at the New York Stock Exchange this morning in New York City. Yes, they did. Don is literally everywhere. Don is in Paris. She's in, in New York City. She's in at the giving a speech at the um scrimmage for the football team. Don is everywhere. She's literally everywhere. I mean, she's on Good Morning America. She's on CBS Morning. She ain't, she ain't on Captain Will's show yet. But eventually, she will be on the show eventually. But I'm like, I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of her, like, providing opportunities for these young ladies. And, I, and you can see the growth of these, of these women. You can, under the tutelage of our coaching staff. You can see it. You can see it. Don shields a lot for these girls. Now, this group, a little different because they love the camera. Not going to lie. Can't wait for the next episode of T, T 
tea time with uh Tessa. Can't wait for it. Can't wait for it. Tessa Johnson, I would love to have you on my show. Oh boy, that would be awesome. So awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, open the bell in New York stock exchange, they just don't do that for everybody. Come on now. Come on now. That's legit. I smile. Chicago has the same opportunity Indiana has. Camilla and Angel with dry balls and put butts in the seat. Chicago's happy. You are absolutely right. You, you are absolutely right. The same opportunity. If not, um, I was like, if not more. But Angel Reese is bringing in a whole lot of social media folks and, 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 and bandwagon folks, just like Caitlin Clark is, love or a hater. Angel Reese moves a needle. She does. And you throw in Camilla Cardoza, who's amazing, amazing story, beautiful spirit. Mm, you're right. You're right. Chicago's overjoyed right now. What you're going to see in the WNBA this year is some, some sellouts. You're going to see sellouts that uh, in places that didn't get sellouts before. I want you know, and I say this like, like this right here. I say, I say it because they got, I mean, eventually you got to increase the prices of the tickets. Increase the price. I know Indiana going to increase the price because you know, they're going to be sold out. So make that money. Make it more tough to get those tickets to see these quality superstar players. Now, I hate it. This is what I despise because we got revisionist history. It's like this is a generational draft. Okay. Generational draft. Best draft ever. Folks talking about that. This is a really good draft. This is, this is a good draft. Uh, you know, but it's been amazing drafts in the past. Come on now. If you constantly having amazing players you know, come out of college, every draft is going to be good. Every draft is going to be sensational. Next year's draft is going to be sensational. Because you got great players playing. Don't, don't have revisionist history and say, like, this is the best ever. It's the most watched ever, for sure. But every year, if you put eyeballs in, in, on, on this sport and, and promote it the way it's promoted, this, you know, this was the first time they had you know, actual fans at the uh, event in the last 10, 12 years or something. Like, let's do it. They sold out. This is the thing. For the WNBA draft, WNBA draft, they sold out that spot in 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So next year, make the venue bigger. Double in size. Triple in size, whatever the case may be. If you sold out, you know, a thousand seats in 15 minutes, obviously there, there is a demand for people watching the WNBA. Y'all saw it last night. It was some brother right on the front row. It seemed like it was at every camera pick doing his thing. I don't know who he was. Maybe a social media guy. I'm not sure. But I saw him dancing and celebrating like he won the, the championship himself. Having a great old time. A lot of folks having a great old time. I already told, I already told wifey, we going next year. We going. We going next year. Yeah. I want a media pass. Let me know right now. I want, I want one right now. Elizabeth Anderson. Greetings, Captain Will. Camilla looks so beautiful in that red suit. I'm so proud and so happy for Camilla. We can't, we can't say enough about Camilla Cardoza. We can't. And it was a tough, y'all read the tea leaves. It was a tough decision for her to actually you know, declare for the draft. It was. She was 50-50 for a long time. But she ultimately declared for the draft. She's going to get her WNBA salary done. She's going to get multi, multi. I can't say NIL deals because she's not in college. She's going to get multi endorsements. And she's in an environment in Chicago where she can be a star. She can be a star in Chicago. And get, these girls are, are literally going to ride the wave with endorsements. Because the, the whole notion of these girls, are, oh, you know, Camilla, I'm going to make $78,000 this year. Well, for WNBA, she is going to make $78,000. That, that's going to be her salary. First year, she's going to make $78,000 for four months of, of work, I would say. Okay. That's our base salary. I don't know how many endorsement deals this, this woman going to get. Think about it. Beautiful girl. Beautiful story. She about to get paid. 
She is about to get paid. There is some marketing situation that's going on right now, being talked about right now in Chicago for Camila Cardoza. She's going to get endorsements, of course, for the United States. She's going to get endorsements for Brazil. It, 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 I just can't wait. And, of course, we're not going to know all the ins and outs of what Camila Cardoza is going to make. And it ain't none of our business. Everybody don't know what I made. You might not know what everything you made. Everything got to be posted. You know what I'm saying? But trust and believe. Because you can kind of, this is how you can tell. Mm, you can tell when a, um some of these young ladies are making a whole lot of money. When they ain't going overseas to play ball. When they ain't going overseas to play ball. You can tell. You can read between the lines. You know, Angel, um, Angel Wilson, I don't know Angel Wilson was doing over the offseason. Promoting her book on every talk show. That's what she was doing. Everywhere you saw, you saw Aja Wilson on your TV screen. Yeah, I don't know how much Aja Wilson making. She's making a lot. She's making a lot. Camila Cardoza is about to get paid. And the endorsements right now in 2024 are only going to go up for those young ladies. I saw that mess about, you know, Ice Cube offering $5 million for the big three. Come on, man. Who, who actually believe that? Who actually believe that, that Cube's going to buy, going to pay uh, Caitlin Clark $5 million? Who, uh, raise your hand if you think that's, that's, that was the case. Who actually thought that? Who thought that? Big three struggling, y'all. Who, who been to a big three game in recent memory? Exactly. You thought it was going to just say Caitlin Clark? $5 million to play against these 40, 50 year old men? No. No, that's just to get visibility for the big three, trying to get some, some butts in the seat. And I ain't, I ain't mad at Cube trying to do that. I'm not mad. I'm not mad, but you know it wasn't going to happen. Come on now. Let's keep it real. Keep it real. Cedric Pratt. Angel Reese plus Camila equals Aja Wilson and Elena Coates. Oh, my, my, my. That's a good comparison. Elena Coates hasn't had the WNBA career I thought she was going to have. I, I thought Elena Coates was going to come in and, and, and tear it up. Because if I remember correctly, I think Elena Coates was the number two pick. Number two and number three pick when she came out of South Carolina. The expectation is very high. Now, she's bounced around, and she's played overseas multiple times, and she's gotten better. Much like Kiki, much like Kiki, Kiki has been dominating overseas. That three-pointer that she has is straight up sweet. I hope she makes a team. I hope she does because she's been grinding. She really has. Jay Judah, Kimmy Lacardo also said, nobody's going to be able to get rebounds but me and Angel. <laughs> she did say that. She did say that. She did. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting because you ain't going to push. I think, see, we've been trying to um, get, it's two It's two versions of Camila Cardoza. You have the Camila Cardoza that played with South Carolina, and you have the Camila Cardoza that played with Brazil. The Camila Cardoza that played with Brazil is the same Camila Cardoza that we want wanted to play with South Carolina. That is a more physical version of Camila Cardoza, the Cardoza that doesn't take any mess. The Cardoza is like, yeah, I'm going to get you. That type version. That that's what she international play. If you watch international basketball, it is more physical. They let stuff go more, and we're gonna see that um, during Olympics. This is Olympic year, so we watch a lot of basketball during this. You know when the WNBA because WNBA actually takes a break during the Olympics, so we're watching some of that stuff. The physical play. Now, so so I'm hoping, much like Don said, the version she hopes that the version. That uh, uh, NBA, a WNBA player that Camila Cardoza is going to be while playing in Chicago is the version that was was in the Final Four. That was a dog. That version of Camila Cardoza. She couldn't be denied. If she plays that way with Chicago, along with Angel Reese, they're going to do some damage. They are really going to do some damage. And, and, I mean, she can rebound. She can block shots. You're not going to move her like that. She's not going to be intimidated. 
You can't intimidate somebody who came from another country and came to the United States at 15 years old and couldn't speak the language. You're not going to intimidate her. That girl been through more than we would ever know. Okay? That's just the reality of the situation. So you're not going to intimidate her. So ain't no, like, no bullying or, I'm, you know, dude right here. You know who I love? I love me some Diana Taurasi. Diana Taurasi would say whatever. You give her a microphone, she would say whatever. And I love that about her. She talked mess. She, oh, man. And how she be talking about the rookies and welcoming. Diana Taurasi is 40-something. She's been doing this for a long time. She know every trick. It's just like going to the Y. Going to the Y and some old school brother. Well, I guess I'm an old school brother now. <sighs> yeah, I'm an old school dude now. Just like an old school dude like myself who know every trick in the book. In the book. Ain't, ain't uh, athletic like that no more. You know, slow down. But you can you know, do one of them things to you. Mm -hmm. You know, because you got an old man's strength, you know. That's Diana Taurasi, who's still an amazing basketball player and talk more mess than anybody. I can't wait to, you know, Phoenix playing some of these rookies. Keep eye on her. I mean, Phoenix, you know, Taurasi, I mean, even though she's old, she can still ball. Still ball. Shondell Matthews. Love Camila Cardoza and so happy for her family. Camila and Angel will play great together in Chicago. Yeah, I really, I, I really do. That that college stuff gonna be gone. It's gonna be gone. Nobody gonna even talk about that. It's something we do. We 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 have revisionist history, and and I'm talking about it. You know, next season. Um, Zulu 1520. Columbia needs a WNBA team. Day T. Columbia are back in in Charlotte. You know, I agree with you completely that Charlotte needs a WNBA team. I think you need to capitalize on the um, the distance that you know is, is is from USC, not far at all. Um, and if you have, just imagine if there if the Charlotte Sting still existed, and you had a scenario where you can draft two Gamecocks, two Gamecocks. If there was opportunity, like the Los Angeles Sparks had having two first round picks. If, if Charlotte Sting had the opportunity to have two first-round picks and you were able to get multiple players for South Carolina, that would be amazing. It would be amazing for tickets. It will be amazing for the, the sport. It will be amazing for so many different reasons because you are you will be bringing in uh, a, a uh, ready-made audience to every game, to every game. You know, and then what if a, a player like, just just work with me. Just just be with me. A player like Aja Wilson, who, who say, I want to come back home. You know, Steph Curry been talking about that for years. I'm going to go back to Charlotte and play. My brother ain't came to Charlotte yet. Been talking about it because he want to talk about coming back home. You know, I would love. I, here's the thing. And people might push punch me in the face about saying this, but I'm going to say it. If there was an opportunity for, for the WNBA to, to um, bring another franchise to Charlotte, would we be opposed? Would, be oppo would we be opposed if Don Staley was actually coached that team? Not saying next year, not saying four years from now, but it would just would just say, would you be opposed? We would be upset. Yeah, we'd be upset. We'd be upset. We would. Yeah. That didn't even sound right when I said it. Mm -mm. Now, nah, Don don't need to go nowhere. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But y'all talking about adding multiple teams. And, you know, Golden State, San Francisco, you know, that area already got one team. They already, they already sold, what, 6,000 season passes already? Season ticket holders or whatever? So that's going to be one. I've heard, this is the thing. This is the thing. I've heard that Serena Williams wants to own a WNBA team. I've heard the possibility of bringing a team back to Houston, the Houston Comets. Remember, they were really good. Cynthia Cooper and them, you know, uh, Cynthia Cooper and, and uh, Tina Thompson and all those you know, great players they had. That would be awesome. I've heard if they bring a franchise to uh, to Houston, I've heard. And, you know, this is just rumors, you know, but I hear stuff, you know, I do. 
I've heard there's some some somebody named Beyonce might be involved in some ownership group. That's just what I heard. Not saying it's the truth, but that's what I heard. But there are going to be multiple teams who are going to begin their franchise over the next four years. Those are the facts. Are you opposed of a situation where Serena Williams is owning a WNBA team, bringing her celebrity, bringing her clout? Would you be opposed if somebody like uh, Beyonce and all her beehive and all those different things are actually owning a WNBA team? I won't. Not at all. Not at all. I think the league deserves more visibility. Not opposed to it whatsoever. I'll chip in. Mm -hmm. Travis Cornett, watch out for the next media deal for the NBA, w, uh, for the NBA, WNBA cap. Bro, it's going to be something. I'm going to be interested in seeing those numbers. I have to see those numbers because this is the opportunity to, to really make a statement for women's sports. It's a, it's a, I mean, it's a statement. They say, okay, that, like, yo, we believe in women's sports. We believe in a WNBA. And we're going to be all in. Because it ain't going to go backwards. This is the deal. Women's college basketball is not going to go back 20 years. It's only going to in in increase. So you had the, the Caitlin Clark effect. Where, you know, people just showing up to games because Caitlin Clark is there. You got that. And they're going to put the, all the eyeballs. ESPN going to put the whole big movement towards Paige Beckers this summer. I mean, in the fall. We know that. Paige knows that. She spoke about that. We know. You know, so as long as they uh, do a, li a better job of uh, spreading the love around, I'm, I'm cool with it, you know. But I just want to see the growth, and we're going to see the growth. So whatever uh, deals that was made before, those deals, you rip them joints up. They, it's over. It ain't, it, that ain't never, ever happening again. The WNBA ain't going back, backwards. And you can, can see, you can literally see a scenario. You can see a scenario. Because the, the men's basketball, men's college basketball, is in a situation where there are no storylines. They are the, the best players go to the NBA. And in, the NBA draft will be full of freshmen, sophomores, and international players. That's the NBA. That and so as soon as you get a name in college basketball, you are gone to the NBA. Uh, with his number one player is Cooper Flag. You know that brother gonna be gone after one year. You know, but when he's finally making a name for himself, his freshman year, he's gonna go on to the to the league. And the cool thing about WNBA. In, in college basketball, the WNBA are getting what men's college basketball got in the 80s. They got ready-made players who've been playing basketball for three or four years. That's what the WNBA is getting. They are getting ready-made players. They ain't got to you know, uh, uh, teach them as much because you you're not drafting off potential like that. Imagine. We flipped the script, and the, and the uh, WNBA was drafting the way that uh, the NBA drafts the best freshman people, the best freshman in the in the um, in women's college basketball goes to the W the same way the best freshman goes to the NBA. So you won't see the the growth of a player like our own Malaysia Full Wiley. No, you'll see a drafted in, in the lottery. You'll see a drafted within the first three four picks. That's literally what would have happened. You'll see Juju, first few picks, Hannah Hidalgo, those, those freshmen will be gone. That's what's happening with men's college basketball. You might see, I ain't gonna say you might, you're gonna see men's, men's college basketball on a decline while women's college basketball is on the incline for, for multiple years. Multiple years. Bro. They, they wasn't no uh, 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 barbershop talk about men's basketball this season. 
I live in Charlotte. There was no barbershop talk. You know, you got the, the Duke, North Carolina type stuff. You know, got it. But there ain't no talk about that. The talk, and this is in the shop. This ain't in the nail salon. This ain't in the you know, the, the beauty where you're getting your, getting your hair did and all this different stuff. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the barbershop. Where you can cut. Women getting shaved and all this different stuff. I'm talking about women's basketball. They talk about getting the clock, talking about my ladies are full wally. They talk about injuries. They talk about Camila Cardo. They ain't no talk about no men's college basketball. No. No. Things have changed. Things have changed. I'm just keeping it real with y'all. I'm, I'm keeping it real. I am keeping it real. What you also going to see is that, that ESPN uh, uh, machine you know what I mean? Start talking about old Malaysia Fool Wally. Because they, they already made her a favorite then this past season. You're going to see a whole lot more about Malaysia Fool Wally coming from ESPN. Okay? And I, and I say this ESPN. I mean, she's a, she is she is a going to be a, a, an amazing player. But we got a whole lot of players at the University of South Carolina who, who are amazing players. Now, they don't pick and choose. You know, I, I'd be happy. You talk about one of them because you don't talk about none of them right now. You know what I'm saying? But... I want to hear some talk about Tesla. I want to hear some talk about Raven. A pal. I mean, you got so many. I can just go down the line. Just go down the line. Elizabeth Anthony and Nike making money. Show you right. There is um, there's a scenario that South Carolina, you know, who is sponsored by Under Armour, will um, choose another shoe deal. Could it be Nike? Hmm. Something to watch. Little recruiting. Little recruiting. There is. I saw this online yesterday. And I hadn't really talked about talked about it much because I didn't think it was, you know, there was any type of possibility that it was going to happen. But now that a few things have moved around, I guess I can speak on it. There is a player who is not, you know, committed to anyone just yet. She's a four-star recruit, talented basketball player. She, she is, uh, her finalists are, and what, what made me talk about, think about it was our finalists in South Carolina, UConn, Central Florida, you know, she's not a elite talent, but she's a really good basketball player. Six foot guard, forward, you know, um, handle the ball, hard nose defense. Um, comparisons uh, to to a, a Brie Bill. OK. Decent size. You know, I told her it's a six foot. And she named her final five. Um, I want to say March the 31st, and Carolina was in it. And I was like, I was surprised that uh quote unquote Carolina's in it. You know, I was just like, okay, is this a situation where um she would replace one Sanaya Ja who just went to the portal and joined Arizona? Her name is Emily Rodriguez. She goes to um, school in Florida. She's originally from Miami. And just someone, someone to watch. Someone to watch. Not, and again, not saying she's an elite talent, but she's a four-star recruit. And she plays a position similar size than one Sanaya Ja. Just, some, just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind about Emily Rodriguez. Keep that in mind. Might be a little uh, stuff in the future. Concerning her. Kendall L. Cap, do you remember NBA games on East Coast were tape delayed and you had to watch them after 11 p.m. news? Bro, say less. That actually happened. That actually happened. There was not a scenario where, and I think we 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 honestly forget, and and then you know, some folks don't know. And I'm and Kendall, that's what you're saying. Uh, you know, some folks just don't know. That 
the NBA was on its last legs. The NBA was talked about being a drug league, a bunch of druggies. ABA came over, joined the NBA, about to go out of business. Brothers had second jobs. That was the NBA. And yes, the finals were on tape delay. They didn't even show the finals live. That was how much respect uh, television gave the NBA back in those days. Now, this ain't the time where this is the, the era, you know, obviously that's before cable, when you only had like three channels, two or three channels. And back when I was a kid, I mean, really had one channel, channel and a half, you know, because, you know, the antenna didn't work quite right. But don't, that the NBA came a long way and then it exploded. When Michael Jordan signed with the NBA, he wasn't making $30 million. Charles Barkley, that, them cats weren't making that money. That stuff ain't permanent, y'all. It ain't permanent. The, the popularity of the NBA is going down. It's going down. They've lost a lot of fans, special middle-aged fans. The growth of women's sports is changing the narrative. It's changing. It's changing. I smile. Chicago better get this right. Their fan base is going to explode. You are so, so right. Mocha Latte, the Lakers are my team, and I can honestly say, Mocha Latte said, the Lakers are my team, and I can honestly say, I've only watched a total of one to two games. That is the reality. That is reality. I follow the Charlotte Hornets. A lot of times it's painful to watch, not going to lie. But also, and I say that, not, not even saying because we got a bad team. I'm saying that in regards of the product on the court. There is absolutely no defense in the NBA. None. Zero. Absolutely no defense in the NBA right now. None. Y'all saw what happened in the All-Star game this year. Like, they, they, their commissioner was so upset about the product on the court. We want to see some competitiveness. We want to see some defense. What the game the other day? The, the, the um, halftime, it was 80-something to 70-something. Both teams shooting over 60%. And the defense being played. Nothing. But that's an NBA right now. That is. Reggie, I know Saxon better get some burn. You know, I, we were having a conversation last night. She balled out overseas. She was playing overseas. She was playing. She was balling out, rebounds, points, block shots, all those cool things. WNBA is tough. WNBA is tough. JB. I'm going to have to drop that little change on WNBA lead pass this year. Game costs all over the place. That's it. That's it. And I'm going to be talking about it. I'm going to be talking about uh, all the players who are playing in the WNBA. And a little bit of extra stuff, you know, because I'm going to be watching a whole lot of it. I watch a ton of college basketball this season and not men's bas college basketball. Women's ba college basketball. And I'm going to be watching a whole lot of WNBA. And I'm going to be talking about it. That's what's up. Teron, if WNBA, if WNBA does not pay these ladies their value and soon a new professional league will, sp will sprout up to do so. Say less. Say less. Real talk. If you can get a couple of billionaires, because because the, the we ain't the only ones thinking that. And Teron, you brought up a great point. We are not the only ones who are thinking about the growth of this sport and where it's going to go. Think about it 10 years from now. 10 years from now, where the W could be. Because college basketball ain't changing. It's going to continue. We're going to continue to break records over the next 10 years. So if somebody, and we're talking about the WNBA, and that, but that's also, they, 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 we got to talk about the gatekeepers. So the gatekeepers are all these television networks. So they got to they got to put the games on television. They got to put the games on television. It's a perfect time. It's a perfect time. WNBA starts when the college basketball season ends. WNBA ends before football starts. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem. I think that the season needs to go longer. Go longer. You think I wouldn't love to see uh, 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 
Camila Cardoza playing into November? You know what I'm saying? I, how about go all the way until the college basketball season starts? You play from May to November? Hell, you can play longer. I don't care. People are going to stop watching basketball just because football is on. You just play your play it the right way because we know football is king. NFL is king. We know that. We know that. Nobody can beat the NFL. So don't play when they ain't playing. But extend the season out incrementally. NBA plays 82 games. Then they do their playoffs, which is all seven-game series. They even added the play-in season. Like, what the hell? So they start in October and don't end to damn near July. That's a long season. Extend these ladies out. More revenue, more exposure, more visibility. I want a scenario where these girls don't have to go overseas to make money. Have a longer season than four months. Have it six months. Have it seven months. That's what I would want to see. That's what I want. Double the season. I don't care. Whatever the case may be. And I know that the, the contracts are what's been, being um, reported. I know all those things. And, but, you know, the, and the WNBA uh, divide, uh, provides a, uh, an apartment for them, provides, you know, a car for them. But I want dollars. I want money. Agent Wilson should be making the best player in the country, the best player in the world, should be making millions upon millions of dollars in the WNBA. That's what I want. I want her at least making a million dollars a year, at least in a WNBA contract. That should be the standard bearer. Next year, I want her next year to tear up that collecting, collective bargaining agreement, put something new, and Agent Wilson be the first player making a million dollars. That's how it should be. I remember when, you know, multiple players made a million dollars in the NBA, first ones. Let her be the first one. She deserves it. LSU fan. Hog Boss 337. Be honest. Brink should have been after Reese. Bro. In what scenario? <laughs> in what scenario should uh uh <laughs> that's that's cute. That's cute. Cameron Cameron Brink is a better player than Angel Reese. Let's let's be honest. Um she's a better shooter. She's a better uh, defensive player. She has more offensive skill than Angel Reese. Angel Reese is a better rebounder than Cameron Brink. Angel, uh, Cameron Brink is a better defender and shot blocker than Angel Reese. A lot of different scenarios. What you see, these general managers in the WNBA, you know, they may not hit on every player. You know what I'm saying? Because that could still, it's a draft. You know what I mean? But I ain't seen no scenarios where, where Angel Reese was, was a top three pick. None. No, no, none. No scenarios where I saw Angel Reese being a top three pick. The scenario, she was projected to be picked seven to eight, and that pretty much what happened. So, Mocha Latte, D Way better, better needs to invest in a facility of the Chicago Sky. I'm, I'm, I'm I am so, 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 uh, I agree with you. I agree with you. That would be amazing for him if he did so. That would be awesome. It would be awesome. William Ellis. Uh, very good presentation and explanation of WMA salary expansion potentials. Now, the expansion of franchise and the salary of Establishment of the uh, USA as main women's world basketball network. I am not upset about that. Um, I think because because I'm, I'm going to use a scenario. Growing up, I was a wrestling fan. Even now, I'm still a wrestling fan. So I still watch wrestling. Right. Growing up as a kid, you will find all WWF on the USA Network. USA Network, you're going to see WWF. So I'm not opposed to a certain um, 
network being all in on the WNBA. It ain't going to happen because ESPN and ABC going to have uh, dibs on this whole thing because they kind of control everything. So if ESPN promotes this correctly, the same way they said they're going to, you know, televise 35 or 39 games of the Indiana Fever, keep that same energy. It's up next year. Do more. Do more. It, next year, if, if Paige Becker is going to be the, the, the golden child, do her the same way. Eyeballs mean eyeballs. You know, because eventually, eventually, all the talk going to be about Juju. All the talk going to be about, you know, Full Wiley. Kind of her dog go. You know, if they, they, whatever marketing tool they use, which I don't agree with a lot of, but for the growth of the sport, and if they put putting eyeballs on, you know, on the sport, you know, they're going to, they're going to take, they're going to take control. They're going to take control. And I just hope, I just hope they don't screw this thing up. I hope they don't screw it up because you have so many talented basketball players before and after Caitlin Clark. Okay. Don't because you had opportunity to put a shine on these beautiful young women who've been doing this for a long time. Okay. Don't screw this up. Don't screw this up. Linda Washington, I love your show, Captain. You're the best. I thought Camilla should have went second in the draft. I mean, and Linda, thank you. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Um, there were some scenarios that Camilla could have went to, to uh, Los Angeles. I, you know, I, it, some things are sometimes are, are like regional, you know. I mean, Cameron Brink, Camilla Cardoza, you know, I think... And I don't know if this happened. Don't know if this happened at all. But you, you know, Cameron Brink played for Stanford. Los Angeles Sparks. Ready-made fan base. Tickets. Sparks are going to sell a whole lot of tickets because Cameron Brink is going to be on the basketball team. That is just the reality. It would be no different if uh, there was a team in Charlotte and Camila Cardoza was on this Charlotte team. It would be no different. You know, um, but have the talent. But sometimes I think some things might be a little regional. Uh, LSU Tiger, too. From what I've seen, only two teams have a chance at the championship. Basically, two super teams. That's what the WNBA needs to work on. I hate the scenario. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for chiming in. I hate the scenario where uh, ESPN force feeds stuff. Like, um... Like they, I ain't gonna say like they're being told to say super team. What's a super team? It's a super team because of this whole you know the big three and all this that and the third. Oh gosh! So using NBA terms and correlating it to WNBA. I don't believe in quote unquote super teams. I don't. Is South Carolina a super team? I mean, if you want to, if you want to say Carolina's a super team, because, um, because they recruit so well, but you have a lot of teams that recruit well. Uh, LSU, um, they had number one recruiting class last year, and then this year they don't. They got one player in the top hundred. Carolina consistently recruits well. Carolina consistently keeps their players. You know, I don't. I, you can't be a, in my opinion, you can't be a super team when everybody have the same, you know, resources. You know, WNBA has a salary cap. You can't create a super team when you have a salary cap. You cannot create a super team in the NFL because of the salary cap. NBA, you can create a super team. The NBA salary cap, luxury tax. All those different things. It's so, so stupid. So stupid. You have players. You have, you have Golden State. Golden State is paying Steph Curry and what? Clay Thompson more than the whole Charlotte Hornets roster. But they'll pay over the luxury tax, you know, and build this team. 
Lakers way over the salary cap. You know, it's a joke. It's a joke. And in and, and NBA, you can do that because you can go over the salary cap because you have billionaires and they pay the luxury tax and blah, blah, blah. You can't do that with WNBA. Everybody playing in the same rules. Can't fault the aces for drafting Agent Wilson. Can't fault that. Everybody, well, I couldn't say everybody, but when they drafted Agent Wilson, and it wasn't even the aces who drafted Agent Wilson, it eventually became the aces. Can't fault that. Nobody knew she was going to be that player. We did. Did we know she, did the world know that she's going to be uh, the best player in the world? No. But they didn't get great over time. They got multiple picks and became great. Jackie Young, she was a number one pick. You know, it's just, it's just like, Everybody on the same sheet of, sheet of music. Everybody giving the same playbook. It just depends on how you work those plays. And then you get lucky in the draft. Indiana, if they hit, they've already hit on Aaliyah Boston. They most likely will hit on Caitlin Clark. They won't be picking number one next year. They will be picking somewhere further down in the draft. But there is a scenario over time that the Indiana Fever could be in a situation similar to, you know, the aces of, of having amazing talent and keeping that talent, you know? Now, you got, you no know, situation in New York where you got, you know, they formed a quote-unquote super team, Brianna Stewart, taking lesbian, all these different things, you know? You got to have a salary cap, true salary cap bring parity. There ain't no parity in the NBA. You know, going into the season, going to be out three or four teams who are going to win the championship. There ain't no parody in Major League Baseball. None. None. You can literally spend whatever the hell you want to spend in Major League Baseball. You know, football, salary cap. Hard salary cap. I like hard salary caps. Love that. Love it. But thank you for the comment. Really dope. Ah. <laughs> oh. Natalie Jordan, Captain, I met your cousin here in, in New Jersey at Cumberland Mall. He works in Dick's Sporting. <laughs> Yo, we roll deep. We roll deep. I know what you're talking about, too. I know exactly what you're talking about. That's what's up. Robin Minnick. Still wish Camilla was uh, second to LA team. Me, too. Me, too. Sean Hill, Chicago got a nice squad. Angels going to bring the dog out of Camilla. Camilla's game is going to elevate once they get her full potential. Man, it's, I just can't wait for Chicago Scott to play. I can't wait. Chicago Scott might be my squad. Uh, Juan Truth, I know how you feel. I have to pull for Angel too. Now, no choice. Could build all day. Those are the facts. Like, we, can't, we have to. We have to pull for. I mean, it's just like, that is what it is. We have to pull for. And Kabila, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm going to look online because her, her jerseys went on sale. Yeah, I'm going to get a jersey. I'm going to be wearing that joint too. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's going to be on. It's WNBA all day, all day. And we, and you, we got to represent. We have to represent our young ladies. Natalie Jordan, Tessa is a new baby face of women's college basketball. Yo, Tessa's going to be really good. That girl's going to be good. So good. I'm going to cry. Quiet as it's kept. Juju's class is going to change the things. That class is beyond ridiculous. Well, I mean, I don't even know to say to that. I don't know how to say that. Because, and, and this is what I say. This is what I say. You can look at every recruiting class. Every recruiting class. And you, you can have, you know, different scenarios of what we see or what. That, okay. Juju Watkins went to Southern Cal. Where she could take a thousand shots. Great. Okay. Hidalgo went to Notre Dame where she can take a thousand shots. They went to teams that needed talent 
needed talent. Here's a scenario. Here's this is what's gonna be different. Juju Watkins is not taking 21 shots a game next season. She's not because Southern Cal is getting more talent on the basketball team. I don't know if y'all know about Kennedy Smith, but Kennedy Smith is, is legit. Kennedy Smith, the top six player in the country in this recruiting class. Kennedy Smith and Juju Watkins went at it in high school. Okay. Those are just the facts. Now they're going to be playing with one another. Juju on Southern Cal was a lightning bolt because she had to take a bunch of shots. If Juju Watkins was on South Carolina team, you think she'd take 20 shots? If she was on UConn team, you think she'd take 20 shots? No. It'd be the same situation of a Malaysia for a while. It ain't no different. I don't, I don't put those. When you're playing with better talent, your shot's going to go down. Michaela Williams is excellent. She played on a great LSU team. But we hear a lot about Juju Watkins. We hear a lot about Hannah Dago, blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, I mean, we can go back. We can go back. You know, class of 2023 was a great, you know, had some great players, you know, potentially. You know, Juju and Michaela, Hannah, K.K. Arnold. K.K. Arnold. Number six ranked player in, 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 in um, class of 2023. She played for UConn. You're not going to show up and take all those shots for no Paige Beckers. You know, I mean, a lot of play. I mean, 2023 class um, or 2022 class. It's just, I think, I think if you're constantly talking about a player all the time, you're going to think they're the best players that ever existed, you know? Uh, it just, I, I don't know, man. I'm trying to pull some up as we talk because you, you, it's just like, I just, I have to, I just got to, you know, put things in context, you know. Um, just in context. And we'll see how it ends up being, you know, four years down the road. You know, yeah. and say class of 2022, you know, Kiki Rice, UCLA, um, Tamia Gardner, you know, Oregon State, now wherever the hell she's going to go. It's just like we have to look. I like to look at classes, you know, three years down the road. I really do when they actually have talent around them. Southern Cal got three top 40 players who's coming in. They have five top 100 players come in, coming in. And you got a couple of dogs on that team to go along with Juju. It's going to make Juju a better player. It's going to make Southern Cal a better team where you're not dependent on a freshman to take the buck of the shots. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Um... Let's have that conversation in a few years, you know. Let's have a calm conversation. Because, I mean, real talk, I can do the same thing talking about that class of 23. I can say the same thing about this class of 2024 class. I can say legitimately the same thing. I can talk about Sarah. I can talk about Jelani. I can talk about, you know, Joyce. I can talk about, you know, I mean, hell, Maddie. I mean, so many different players. Kennedy Smith, Justice Carlton, Jordan Lee. So many great players who are going to be freshmen. Now, some of those freshmen aren't going to be, you know, superstars at their freshman year because they're not going to have an autonomy like that. Texas, with Justice Carlton and Jordan Lee coming in, they're not going to take those shots like that, but they're going to be some quality freshmen. Joyce. Joyce ain't going to come to South Carolina and dominate like that, but Joyce, if she went to Clemson, was she taking 20 shots a game? You know, it'd be a different light. You know what I'm saying? So let's have fun with it. It's all good. Elizabeth Anderson, I live in San Diego, California, but born and raised in Aiken. One of my homeboys came up in the Army with from Aiken. I'm always in uh, in L.A. watching the Lakers and the Sparks. Sometimes we fly to Vegas to watch Agent Wilson. That's what's up. Okay. Okay. That's cool. That's what's up. Enjoy. Enjoy. 
Teron, Camilla did a great job handling the press conference and interviews. Amazing job. Amazing job. Great job. Our girl made our, made all of us proud. All of us proud. And we just can't. I mean, we love all of it. We love all of it. And we love, you know, the growth as a player. Because if you go back and you look at her when she was playing with Syracuse and you look at her over time with soccer, I got more minutes, more minutes, more minutes, and end up being the number three pick in the WNBA draft. So special. This concludes another episode of Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. I'm your man, Captain Will. Make sure you like and share and subscribe. And if you're watching me right now, if you're not subscribed, just hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter, Gamecocks Talk. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. Um, you're not rocking with the best. And since you're rocking with the best, come rock with your man, Captain Will. Let's go. Let's go.